There are two simple ways to make any color transparent in Photoshop, but unlike what you might think, it does not involve the use of automatic selections like the Select Subject button. Instead, the two selection methods you'll learn here give you far more control for isolating colors within a subject or within your background, making it super easy to tell Photoshop exactly what you want selected. Now we'll be covering a lot of little details in today's lesson, so if you want to make sure that all of the tips you learn here stick, make Make sure to grab your free copy of the lesson cheat sheet for this tutorial available in the description below. That way if you ever forget some of the steps you learn here you'll have a handy guide to look back on in the future to save you a bit of time. But anyways let's get into Photoshop and get started. Now for the first example we're going to keep things a little bit more simple with a single color to choose from this logo that we want to remove. But then in the second example we're going to go through something a little bit more complicated where there's different hues of a single color that will throw off the methods that we talk about in this first example. However, in this first example, the methods that we're going to talk about will just make your life really easy. And the way we're going to do that is using the magic wand tool. Now to access the magic wand tool, we can just press a W on our keyboard, or you can find it right here in your toolbar underneath the object selection tool or the quick selection tool. So as we see here, the magic wand tool. With that tool selected, we have a few different settings up in the options bar that we'll want to adjust before we go and make our selection. In this particular example, I want to go and remove all of the white from this outer part, including the middle, but I don't want to remove the white from the text. So we're going to adjust the settings according to that. The first thing that I'll do is make sure that anti-alias is checked, and then I'll make sure that contiguous is checked as well. This will force Photoshop to only select colored pixels that are touching. So that means that since I want to keep these white pixels that are in the text here on the sides as well as the top, because those are not touching this outer white color, they will not be selected. If you want to learn more about all of these settings more in depth, you can check out this video right here where I cover the magic wand tool more in depth. But for now, the settings that we'll cover will still get you by. The next thing we'll do is make sure that sample all layers is checked and then we'll set our tolerance to something like 15, for example. I recommend setting the tolerance between 15 and 32 for most examples, because the greater the tolerance, the more of a refined edge you'll get around your selection. With too large of a tolerance, you'll end up selecting more of that color than you'd like, but with too little of a tolerance, it will end up missing little areas within your selection. So for this example, I'm gonna choose 15. The final thing we have to adjust is our sample size, which depending on how big of an area the color is in your photo, you'll need to adjust this accordingly. Because I have a relatively thin area of pixels that is white, I don't want to have a massive sample size, otherwise it's going to start to sample some other colors. So I'll make sure that this is set to point sample or 3x3 three three average. Now with all those settings good to go, I'll make sure that my image layer is selected here in the layers panel, and then I can go and click on the color that I want to select or make transparent. So clicking on that color, as you can see here, it automatically creates a selection around that area. Now to make this selection area transparent, all you need to do is make sure that image layer is selected. With that active selection, we can just go ahead and click on the layer mask icon and then press command or control I to invert that mask. And now we have successfully removed all of that one color. Now to take this one step further, if you wanted to go and remove all of these other white areas within this logo, such as within the text, there's one simple setting that we would need to change to make this happen. I'll press command or control Z to undo this. So now we're back at square one. This time I'll go and uncheck contiguous. So that means when I go and click on this white color, it's going to sample all of the white within that image that matches that color sample, regardless of whether or not those pixels are touching. So that's why we now have all of these words also selected as well. With this good to go, I'll once again add a layer mask, press Command or Control I to invert that, and now we have added transparency to the other white areas within this logo. The same thing would apply with any of the other colors that you wanted to remove from this particular image. Now before we get into the second method, I just wanted to quickly remind you of the free PDF lesson cheat sheet available in the description below. This free PDF breaks down everything we talk about in this video into an easy step-by-step -step guide to look back on 
the future. To grab your copy, just click the link in the description, type in your name and email, click the button, and your lesson guide will immediately be sent to your inbox. If you have a hard time remembering every step from video lessons like I do, I think you'll really find this guide helpful. And again, it's down in the description below. It's totally free, but with that, let's get back into it with example number two. Now in example number two, we have a little bit of a different situation because we have a lot of different hues of green behind our subject. Now, of course, you could still use the magic wand tool with a higher tolerance setting to make this work, but I wanna show you an alternative method using a lesser known selection option that I find really helpful for this type of image. This method is called select color range and it allows you to sample the color behind your subject. So to access this tool, we'll just go up here to select and then down here to color range. This will open up the color range window where we have a couple different settings that we need to adjust so that we're both seeing the same thing here. The first thing that we'll do is make sure that invert is enabled and then we'll make sure that the selection preview is set to none. We'll then make sure that the selection option is enabled and not the image because when we have the selection option enabled, it's going to be a lot easier to see how we're doing with things. So now with this all looking good to go, the first thing that we're going to do is go and click on the color that we want to remove. So in this case, that green background in this photo. Where I just clicked, all will turn black in the image here or the selection preview, and that is representing transparency. So the goal is to make the entire background black on this little preview while the entire subject should remain white. Now the problem is if I go and click between different areas, it just constantly resets that sample and I can't go and select all the different hues of green in the background. So to fix this, all we need to do is hold the shift key and while holding shift, you'll notice that little plus icon beside the eyedropper. So while holding shift, I can now click and drag all around the different hues in the background. And as you can see, it slowly starts to incorporate all of those extra colors into my selection and now the entire background is black. Now the selection is almost complete but we have one final slider that we can adjust which is the fuzziness. The fuzziness will basically adjust the tolerance of our selection area. By increasing the fuzziness, Photoshop is going to include more colors within your selection based on your initial sample. So as you can see here, we start to have more of the colors within the eagle beginning to be excluded from our selection. But since we want our eagle to be basically completely white or as close to as possible, we want to have a lower fuzziness setting so that we have a nice defined edge. You don't wanna go all the way to zero because then you'll end up with a lot of weird results in the background and you won't have a smooth selection. So I would recommend just working your way up with the fuzziness slider until you have a nice clean edge around your subject and there is as little gray or black within your subject object as possible. So now with this looking good to go, we'll go ahead and click OK to create a selection. And because our subject was completely white on our selection preview, that means that that is what is selected once we go back to our canvas. Now to make the background transparent and remove all of that green, all we have to do is make sure we click on that image layer and then go and add a layer mask while we have that active selection. This will remove that background for us, but we have one final thing to double check to touch up the final result. By holding Alt or Option and clicking on the layer mask thumbnail, this will allow us to preview that mask. In this case, you can see there are some leftover white areas in the background representing visibility. So we need to go and remove that. The reason that we have this bit of visibility in the background is because my fuzziness slider was not increased quite enough. So there are still some things in the background that were selected. Luckily, we can touch this up super easily by grabbing our brush tool by pressing B, We'll choose a soft round brush with a 100% flow and opacity, and then we will set our foreground color down here to black. With the layer mask selected, we can scale up our brush and then begin to paint over any areas of white that we see that should be completely black, aka transparent in our image. So now with all those things touched up, we can now do the opposite and touch up any of the black areas within our subject or the eagle in this case. With all the same settings as before, I'm going to just change my foreground color to white, 
with that layer mask still selected, this time we're going to be applying visibility onto our mask. So the goal here is to just go and paint over any white or gray areas left over around your subject. When you're going near edges, as we have here, you'll want to increase the hardness of your brush so that it doesn't spill over. Just right click on your canvas and set the hardness to something like 70%. And then now you can go near the edges of your subject and not worry about accidentally having a soft blurred edge from your brush adjustments. Once your selection is touched up within the layer mask preview, you can just hold Alt or Option and click on the layer mask thumbnail once again to exit out and now you're back to your original image. And now we have successfully removed that multicolored green background from our subject and we still have all the little details of this bird's feathers and things like that. Now to go ahead and export this with a transparent background, all we need to do is go to File and then down here to Save a Copy and then we'll set the format down here to PNG choose a location, give your file a name, and go ahead and click save. Click OK. And now you have successfully removed all of one color inside of Photoshop. So these two selection methods work wonders for selecting specific colors in your photo, but more often than not, you don't just have a single color that you're trying to select. So to expand on the techniques that you learned here and be able to create great selections in any image, be sure to check out this next video right here sharing the best ways to remove backgrounds in Photoshop, even if you have somewhat complicated edges. Again, just click the video right here for that lesson and I hope to see you there.